Hello. The title of the video for January 13th, 2017 is Left Brain Doubt, Right Brain Proof. This was the comment on my previous video, quote, I'm still waiting on proof of demons, devils, angels, aliens, and God. So maybe we should stop blaming all of our problems on them, end quote. Let me say, first off, that we have two sides of our brain, and each has a different function. The left brain is analytical, basing conclusions on what can be verified in 3D reality, and I use that term lightly. The right brain, on the other hand, is intuitive. Its process is very different in that it bases its conclusions on feelings and perceptions of a world that is not visible. While both sides are important, without the intuitive, we are really brain, or I'm um, not really, we are easily brainwashed since, our, since most of our reality is comprised of things we cannot perceive with our five senses alone. The so-called natural mind is incapable of grasping the world beyond the one we see, hear, touch, smell, and taste. This is why meditation is so critical to our liberation from the limitations of five sense reality. Indeed, that's a legitimate question uh, that this writer uh, posed because so many people in the world believe that the only thing that's real is what we can perceive with the five senses, as I said in the blurb. If we can't see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, uh, or what was the other one? <laughs> uh, or uh, hear it, then it's then somehow it's not real. Well, I know I'm not the only one that has had personal experiences that cannot be explained by this five sense reality. I mean, I have experienced things that were very, very, very real to me. Uh, and yes, I was able to perceive them with the senses, but they were extrasensory in that the uh, the sense, the, the awareness that I had was of something beyond normal reality. Uh, there's only been a few times in my life, there's not been a whole lot of times in my life that I've experienced this, but I have experienced it. And I know a lot of others have as well. And I also have, uh, uh, I'm also aware that some people seem to have much more of this than others do. From the earliest, my earliest childhood, I had a very strong sensitivity, a very strong awareness to things that were spiritual. And as I've said in previous videos, I didn't take everything I was taught in church and even by my parents as being the absolute truth. I've been an explorer. I've, I've always been one who has gone outside the box. Now, the greatest challenge that I ever had was when the home that was gifted to me by my spiritual mom, as you, as I've called her, Dr. Mary Horgan, uh, she gifted me this home, and she was the first female minister in Brevard County, and then they ended up stealing my home, even though in the bankrupt, when the original plaintiffs, which was her banker for the church, who tried to steal her property, uh, from her and co coerce her into turning it over to them because it was a very valuable piece of real estate. Uh, it ended up, as I said, they went bankrupt because they couldn't keep affording to pay the attorneys. And I spent my most successful period of time was when I wasn't using attorneys. My most unsuccessful uh, periods of time in that whole fiasco was when I was trusting an attorney to accomplish something for me. There's a lesson there to be learned because I went back the last uh, little bit when they were finally made the second effort to steal my home when they filed a whole separate lawsuit after the original lawsuit was was resolved in bankruptcy court and they were not that my home was not part of the bankruptcy, so they had to open a brand new case, a brand new lawsuit in which my home was the center point of it. They laid claim, false claim to my home, and I wasn't even involved as I've said before, in any of the things that were going on behind the scenes. In fact, some of the paperwork that was produced, I didn't see it for a, a, a period of time, months, 
after it was produced. And this was verified by affidavits that I have filed, and they're somewhere in storage. I don't, I'm, I don't believe any of them are lost, but I don't know where they all are. I can't put my fingers on them because when they took, took my home, a lot of my stuff was, was packed by other people, and I don't know where everything is in, in the storage area, and it's too much work to have to go and, and dig things out. I've moved some things around in the less crowded half of the, uh, of the storage area, but the most crowded part, I haven't, I haven't gone into that at all because it's just too difficult. I mean, there's boxes on top of boxes on top of boxes, and I don't have the physical strength to move everything by myself. In any case, uh, this question of, of uh, something not being real because we can't perceive it, you know, is ridiculous. Of course, there are beings that we do not see. And there, yet there are people that have the gifts that they can see these uh, ghosts, if you want to call them that, or, or uh, entities that don't have a physical form. And, and I remember one time when I had to go back into the house after I um, had forgotten something and I had left and, and I, that's when I was still living in Utah. And uh, I went back in, into the apartment with the, my family in the car and there was some little creature that went scurrying and I saw it briefly and it, it wasn't totally physical, but yet I was able to perceive it uh, with, my, with my eyes. And it was just sort of between dimensions, I guess is how you would, how you would say, between, between normal, our normal reality and then a reality that's there, but, we, but it's beyond the scope of our ability to perceive it. Uh, on a regular basis and and there's an awful lot of testimony about this kind of thing and and those that are locked into their left brain and think that only that which is uh, can be proven scientifically by measurement and everything else are missing the whole point that's only a, that's probably the smallest part of our capabilities because we have been brainwashed and dumbed down and limited in our capability of perceiving the bigger picture. And that's what I'm trying to encourage people to recognize that there's a bigger picture. And the bigger picture is the more important one than the one we see. That's why I'm not going to put all my eggs in one basket and trust Trump alone to, to make all the changes that need to be made uh, if we're going to turn around as a, as a human race. And it's a human race. It's not just the United States. It's not just a, a Western civilization, namely called European, uh, Euro-American civilization. It's not limited to any one faction. It's the big picture. And that's what we need to uh, get back in touch with and become aware of is the big picture. Not the little picture of our limitation, but the big picture that's beyond the current perception of reality. Anyway, I, I hope that, uh, that, that you are willing, those of you that are on this fence that this, this writer uh, is on, willing to allow for the possibility and, and, and explore the testimony of those that have this ESP, this extrasensory perception, that even, even if it's limited, even if it's sporadic, it's something that has been testified to. It's something that's very, very real. And it has been well described in many other videos and, and people's experiences, including, including professionals and very highly educated people. Uh, I thought of another story, but I, I don't want to get into that now because I, I, I see what the time is and I try to limit my videos to a 10 minute window. Anyway, uh, I do want to thank you for uh, continuing to keep an open mind to the best of your ability and to allow for the possibility that things are happening on this planet that are beyond uh, what we've known before and they are going to be transformative in their nature as they, as they come into full manifestation. Again, thank you for listening. Namaste.